Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Purdy Insurance. Visit Purdy Insurance on Market Street in Sunbury or visit online at purdyinsurance.com. It is great to have with us on the show one of the all-time greats in this uh, profession or any profession, Ray Dittinger. Ray, welcome back. It's great to have you with us. Thanks, Steve. It's always great to be back with you. How you doing? Doing great. Uh, you know, the play Tommy and me, obviously, it's going to be going to the Hershey Theater. I want to see in August. Is that what it's going to be? I think August, August 18th. Yeah, we're tw- going to do three August. performances. Three performances: August 18th, 19th, and 20th. So, um, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. It's a story of you know, it's a story of me and Tommy McDonald and our lifelong. Yep. Our lifelong relationship, which started, and the the the, best, the most exciting part about the whole thing is, by bringing it to Hershey, we're actually bringing it back to where it all began. Because right. Hershey was where the Eagles had their training camp in the 1950s, and Hershey was where I first met Tommy when I was a, a 10-year-old kid with an autograph book, and Tommy was a rookie with the Eagles, and we that was where we met. I asked for his autograph. He handed me his helmet, asked me to walk him to the practice field. That was how we met, and. 1998, the two of us were standing together on the steps of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It was quite a journey. Yeah, it is an incredible journey. And to, to have it come to life in theaters and so forth, what is that like for you to, 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 to have that story told? Uh, it's it's beyond wonderful. It, it really is. It um, You know, I just always felt that it was um, – it was a unique story. I, I don't know that there's anyone quite like it, that uh, a little boy, a 10-year-old boy, looking up to his football hero, uh, actually develops a relationship and a friendship with him over time. And then later on, um, when I became a sports writer, that I found myself in a position where I could kind of lead the charge to try and get Tommy into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And you know, then when it finally happens in 1998, he turns around and says, I want you to be my presenter. And, uh, and we get to take that ride through the streets of Canton and stand on the steps of the Hall of Fame side by side. You know, the little 10-year-old kid from Hershey and the all-pro wide receiver reunited at the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's a wonderful story, and I, I always wanted to write it. I always just thought it was a really nice, feel-good kind of story that, uh, that people would enjoy. Um, and I had never written a play before, but I thought, well, let me give it a try. It's, if, if The story is so good that the story really just kind of tells itself. I mean, you don't have to be Eugene O'Neill to turn this into a good play. So um, uh, we wrote it, we staged it, and Steve, this is, the, this is going to be the seventh year that this play has run uh, in various yes. theaters all around the area. But I always hoped that one day we would bring it back to Hershey, and now we finally will. In fact, I think Ross Tucker's going to be there one night. Ernie Acorsi, of course, Ernie has uh, great connections up here at Penn State. He's going to be yep. a part of it another night, which is really great. Uh, you know, this is, uh, is it fair to say this is not just a story about friendship, but a, 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 about loyalty and a lifelong journey? Is that fair? Yeah, that's totally fair. Uh, that's and that's exactly that's exactly what it is. I mean, people sometimes see the advertising uh, and they see the pictures of Tommy, you know, in his Eagles uniform, where they know they know kind of who Tommy is, uh, and they think it's a play about football, and and it is to, to one to some degree, but I, I think it's really a much larger story, and it's really a story about it's a story about um, relationships and dreams coming true, uh, and I, I think that's that's the beauty of it because every show ends with a Q&A. Uh, we end every performance by bringing the actors and the director and myself on the stage. And we field questions from the audience. And almost every performance, there's always somebody in the audience that says, you know, I wasn't all that excited about coming to this play because I'm not a football fan. I don't root for the Eagles. And I never even heard of Tommy McDonald. But uh, I love this story. It's, it's just such a beautiful story of this little boy and his hero and, and this life's journey that they took that uh, I had tears in my eyes at the end. We hear that all the time. So, you know, that's kind of what I tell people. You know, you don't have to be – You know, I, I always stand in the back of the theater, Steve, and I see the people come through the door. And the people that come through and they're wearing, like, Eagles jerseys and the face paint, I don't worry about them. I, I got them already, okay? I mean, <laughs> I'm yeah. not worried about yeah. whether they're going to enjoy this. I know they will. But it's the other people, you know, the, just the theater goers, the subscribers 
subscribers, the people that aren't football fans, when when they come in and I, and you see them drawn into the story, and at the end they're 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 jumping up for the standing ovation and they've got tears in their eyes. You know, that's yeah. when you know as a storyteller you've really accomplished something, and that happens every night. And I know it's going to go double in Hershey because there's that there's that connection there. I mean, so much of the story is built around Hershey and the, and the town of Hershey and and that era in the 1950s when pro football really did come to Hershey, Pennsylvania. That's a big part of the story, and I think people are really going to enjoy that. Yeah, no question. Now, being a sports writer and breaking into the business, did you have people tell you, oh, geez, Ray, I mean, you sure you want to do that? There aren't many jobs. Did you ever hear that along the way? Because then I'm going to link it to Tommy at, here at one point. Oh, sure. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. I mean, I knew yeah. that's what I wanted to do. I mean, that was what I wanted yeah. to do really from the time I was in, like, sixth or seventh grade. I mean, I, I kind of yeah. said that's what I want to be. That's what I want to do. Um, but, you know, the people, I mean, my dad, I mean, sat me down and tried to explain to me, you know, there aren't that many of those jobs. You know, and you know how many guys out there, how many people out there are thinking exactly what you're thinking, that, that that's what they want to do, too? You know, you know, how, you know how tough the competition's going to be? You know how remote yeah. the chances are? And uh, and I did, but I felt you know it, it didn't change my mind. I mean, this is what I wanted to do. I really felt that this was what I was meant to do, and so I was just going to go for it, you know. And if it didn't work, it didn't work. And then okay, then I'll go sell cars or whatever. But yeah. I mean, I, I really I really wanted to try this and try and make a go of it. You know, here we are, Steve. I mean, 53 years later, I'm still doing it. And uh, mm. and the thing is, I love it just as much now as I did when I started. Exactly. Now, here's the linkage to Tommy. Now, I'm saying this from a perspective. Now, I never saw Tommy McDonald play college. I wasn't born then. But I did see Tommy McDonald play with the Eagles. Right. right. Look, here's the bottom line. All right. You and I both know in the combine world today, too short, too small, whatever. A lot of twos put in front of him. Oh, yeah. Yet he's in the, yet he's in the Hall of Fame. Do you, have you ever thought about the parallels about, a hey, Ray, you know, there aren't many people that make it. This is right. hard to get into. Maybe you ought to do something else. And he probably heard the same thing. Sure, sure. I mean, it, it really is a story about beating the odds. And in that sense, we both did. You know, and uh, I mean, you're talking about today's combine world, how everybody is measured by the tape measure and the stopwatch, uh, and that's that's really true. But that was even true in the 50s. You know, I mean, people, you know, Tommy when he came out of high school, he broke all the scoring records in New Mexico where he grew up, and most of the colleges all said, "Now nah, you're too small." He wanted his mother mm -hmm. wanted him to go to Notre Dame, and frankly, he said, "Now nah, he's too small." So he went to Oklahoma and uh, you know, becomes an All-American on a team that didn't lose a game. Guy, he, he didn't lose a game his entire college career. He graduated Oklahoma. Yeah. He's 31-0. and 0. Then he comes to the NFL, and all the scouts look at him and say, no, he's too small. You know, and so the Eagles grab him yeah. in the third round, and he comes in, and within three years he's the best receiver in football and helps him win a world championship in 1960. And by the time he graduated, by the time he graduated, by the time he finished his pro career, um, he was sixth all-time in catches. He was fourth all-time in yardage, and he was second all-time in touchdowns. I mean, he was an all-time, all-time great player and overcame odds every step of the way. That's okay. The, the guy I work with every Saturday for the past 25 years was just heard his name on the on radio or a guy going after the Steelers job said he would have been a backup special teams guy. So, <laughs> oh, I know. That's a, that, that's, a, that's a very good example. I mean, as, as great a player as Jack was and, and a great player all through his college career. Yeah, I was covering the NFL in the early 70s, and I heard the scouts, and I loved them. I saw him play at Penn State, and I said, this guy's a great player, and he's going to be a yeah. great pro. There's no question in my yeah. mind. And I tell the scout, nah, nah, he's too small. Nah, he's too small. He can't play. And, yeah. But that's, you know, that's the beauty of the whole thing. I mean, that, that to me is the, that's what I always, that's why I always have, I watch the NFL draft with a smile on my face every year, because every year you have the pundits, and every year you have the experts and the, and the draft nicks, and they have all the answers, right? They know every, they know every 40 time, they know every vertical jump. They know they have all the answers about who's going to be who's going to make it and who to, and who's not. And in the end, they're wrong, just the same as the rest of us are wrong. There's, you know, as Seth Joyner has often said to me, and Seth Joyner, you know, eighth round draft pick mm -hmm. who became a great player. <laughs> you know, Seth, you know, Seth, Seth always says, the, you know, there's no instrument that's been made yet that can measure the human heart. Uh, and that is so true. I mean, that is. I mean, it, it's it borders on cliche, but it's absolutely true. I mean, you can measure the height, you can time them in the forty, you can do all of that stuff, but you can't look inside the guy. You don't find that out till you put him on the field and let him play. And the great ones, that's where they'll show themselves. 
and there's also that to be a lot of the great ones quote know how to play the game. Mm-hmm. Tommy was time was Tommy was what five nine one hundred and seventy somewhere five, in that nine, neighborhood. Five nine yeah they they list they listed him at five eleven one eighty five but he was actually five nine one seventy and less <laughs> and less than that at Oklahoma. <laughs> All right, well you have to know how to play. What were a couple of areas where you can tell us where Tommy McDonald, not just with athleticism, but with his brain, made plays? Well, um, he, Norm Van Brocklin and Sonny Jurgensen, who were, who were his two quarterbacks in Philadelphia, both, both over time said that, uh, that he had the best hands of any receiver they ever, they ever played with. Uh, and I can I can say this as someone who saw every game he played as an eagle. And this is um, this I'm not this is no exaggeration, and this is not a figure of speech. I never saw him in his all his time with the Eagles ever drop a pass. I mean zero, never, mm-hmm. never happened. If the ball hit him in the hands, it was caught. Uh, or as he used to say, "That's leather in my pocket." Was how he used to put it. Mm-hmm. He never dropped a pass. And the other thing that was that he he ran great patterns. You know, and and this was back in the '50s into the '60s, an era when defense defenders could pretty much do whatever they wanted to do to a receiver. I mean, mm-hmm. yeah, the idea they talk about press coverage <laughs> now. I mean, that's nothing compared to what to what, what it was like trying to get off the line of scrimmage in the '50s. I mean, you yeah. had defensive backs that were just beating guys up and literally throwing them on the ground, not letting them get off the line of scrimmage. And yet, Tommy was was so quick and so elusive and also so tough. I mean, pound for pound, a tremendously tough player that he just he, he just fought right through it and. When other guys were afraid to go across the middle, and believe me, going across the middle in those days, you were really taking your life in your hands. That, that was his favorite pattern. I mean, that yeah. you know that that fifteen yard dig, that's that quick slant across the middle. That was his favorite route, and uh, and nobody ran it better. And to this day, I'm not sure I've ever seen anybody run it better. Uh, there was no quote five yard contact area back when Tommy played. Oh so. no, there was not. <laughs> no, you know, and no, and, the, no. and the one I think the most memorable quote. Um, that followed him throughout his career. And Tommy said this right up to the day he passed, was the greatest compliment he ever received, was the 1960 championship game. The Eagles beat the Green Bay Packers at Franklin Field, 17-13. It was the only postseason game Lombardi ever lost. Uh, And after the game was over, um, Lombardi said to the reporters, and I saw, found the quote in the paper, and I repeated it to Tommy, and he said, yeah, I know, it's the greatest compliment I ever received. Lombardi told the reporters, if I had 11 Tommy McDonald's, I'd win the championship every year, was what Lombardi said. Um, and Tommy said, you know, he said, that, you know, you could take all of my honors, all of my plaques, all of my trophies, all of that stuff, and you can, you can have all of that. Just give me that quote. <laughs> Just give me that yeah. quote, and that's enough. Coming from Lombardi, come, getting that kind of respect from a guy like Lombardi, Tommy always said was was the highest honor he ever received. It's interesting that um, sometimes people will meet a figure they consider to be larger in life. It doesn't always happen this way, but they'll walk away disappointed. Right? Now, some people you meet their larger in life, and they meet every expectation. Sure. Well, what was it about Tommy McDonald where not only did you connect – but to you, he's a larger-than-life figure that looked at you and and made you feel like you were larger than life. Yeah, true, true. I, and uh, the thing was, you I mean, you a couple minutes ago, you really put your finger on it when you talked about how small he was. Because even in that era of pro football, even in the 1950s, he was small. I mean, I mean, it'd be it'd be like super small today. But even in the fifties, he he was small. He, I mean, he was just little. And I remember waiting outside the locker room in Hershey, waiting for him to come out to go to practice that day. And I was wait, I was standing there waiting for his auto, waiting to get his autograph. And the thing that struck me was when he came out the door. Uh, and I, now I'm a ten year old kid, right? I'm like a sixth grader. Yeah. I'm a ten year old kid yeah. standing there with my autograph book. I swear he didn't look any bigger than I did, and he didn't look yeah. any older than I did. I mean, he was so small, and he was so youthful looking, with the short crop blonde hair and the baby face. I couldn't, I mean, I couldn't believe it. But I think that that's one of the reasons why, not just me, but so many kids my age, so many, so many little kids just identified with him. I mean, you knew there were great players. I mean, you knew Van Brocken was a great player. You knew mm-hmm. Ben Narek was a great yeah. player. I mean, there were great players on that team. But as a 10-year-old kid, it was hard to identify with them because they looked like grown men. 
You know, Tommy right. McDonald looked like you. Tommy McDonald yeah. looked like the, the guys you were playing with in the schoolyard. Mm-hmm. So every, every kid identified with Tommy McDonald because in our mind we were Tommy McDonald. The, 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 the only thing that was different and the great advantage I had was I actually got to meet him. You know, my yeah. parents were such big fans that we actually drove to Hershey from Philadelphia and we actually went to the practices. And back then, you know, there were no ropes, there were no fences, there were no security guards. I mean, you could like stand right at the door and wait for your guy to come out. So that was where I met Tommy and, you know, and he just put his arm around me, handed me the handed me his helmet, put his arm around me and said, come on, let's take a walk. And that was how it all started. And, right. you know, in 1998, it wound up with both of us standing there at the Hall of Fame. Amazing story. And that's, you know, you asked me, how did it become a play? It was just that. It was just such a, it was such a crazy, wild, mm-hmm. wonderful story that I said, I have to write this. I have to share this with people because it's just too good. It's too good not to share. It's not just another football story. It's a story that surrounds football. I think that's fair. Mm -hmm. Uh, And you do these Q&A sessions. What's the best question you ever had in the Q&A session about, about the play? Um, a, a lot of them, Steve. But one of the ones that's come up several times, and it's a really good question. The first time somebody asked me it, I thought, oh, that's really good. I, I, I wasn't prepared for that. I hadn't thought about that, but that's a good question. Uh, it was a young guy who had never seen Tommy play. Uh, but he had seen the play now, and now he was really intrigued, and he wanted to know more. And he said, just from my frame of reference, um, I've never seen I, – I don't remember football back then. I only see the game today. Who is Tommy McDonald? How would you compare Tommy? How would you express Tommy McDonald in contemporary terms? Who is he like? You know, who can I in my in my mind's eye trying to get a picture of this guy? Who would I, who would I envision? And what I said was, if you took Brian Dawkins' heart mm-hmm. and you put it in Deshaun Jackson's body, yeah. you'd have Tommy McDonald. And that's, and that's really kind of what it was. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. what Deshaun Jackson brought to the Eagles and what he brought to the NFL in terms of that game-breaking mm-hmm. explosiveness. I mean, every time he touched the ball, he had a chance to score a touchdown uh, mm-hmm. and was, you know, was always making the big play at the big moment. Um, that kind of talent combined with the, the, just the incredible, indomitable will that Brian, Daw- that Brian Dawkins brought to the field, you put the two of those together and you have a pretty good approximation of Tommy McDonald. And while the Eagles and everybody else is in training camp, this will be in Hershey, August 18, 19, and 20. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and you mentioned that we've got a different host each of the nights to handle the Q&A. So we got Ross Tucker the first night. we got Dennis Owens um, from the Harrisburg TV okay. anchor is going to do it yep. the second night. And on the final day, the this, this Saturday afternoon matinee, Ernie Accorsi is going to do it. So it's going to be, it's going to be a great run, and it's, it's, such a thrill to, it's such a thrill for me, and really the cast, too. I mean, we've had all the same actors since we started. Uh, and for all of us to be bringing this back to – Back to Hershey, where we know it all started. Uh, in, in the theater is in the building that was actually the players' dormitory back in the 1950s. Yeah. I mean, to have all of this connect uh, this summer is something I know we're all looking forward to. In fact, what, it's right out there in that corner where you probably first met him, right? Yep, yep. It's all it's all it's yeah. all right there. And uh, you know, the, the beauty of it, and one of the things I feel best about Steve is the fact that Tommy lived to see it. You know, Tommy yeah. got, actually got to see the play. He came, he came with his wife, the kids, the grandchildren, uh, and they came to see the play. And, you know, we've had a lot of people come and see it, and a lot of people enjoy it, but nobody enjoyed it as much as he did. <laughs> just just <laughs> seeing him in the audience and just seeing him laugh and, and, and point at the stage and say, yeah, that's it, that, I remember that. I mean, to see how much <laughs> he enjoyed it um, was, to me, that's, that's, the, that's the best part of the whole experience. It, is, it has really been a wonderful, wonderful ride. Absolute pleasure to spend any time with you. This is a, another great, great. I mean, I know this is six, seven years, but it's just great you've been able to do this. So, congratulations on its success. Thank you, Steve. And when it uh, when it rolls into Hershey, I hope you're. I hope you and Matt are able to get down there and catch a performance. I think you'd really like it. I would love to. Thank you so much for the invitation. We appreciate that. All right, Steve. You take care. Talk to you anytime.